he painted a uh, a mural or a wall. He painted one of his walls with clouds on it so that he could uh, feel like there was more to the room than just the four walls. So if you go in there now on that back wall, on this wall and that room, there's like a nice cloud mural. And he painted it himself. Yeah, I thought about it, uh, but I'm I'm holding out hope that um, I'm holding out hope that I can get some large screen TVs to hang there that will just play images of the outdoors all day long on a loop. You know what I mean? Or a fireplace all day long. Okay. So let's turn in our booklets to page 19. Um, Bobby, just follow along as best you can from home. <clears throat> so the teak, I want to make sure that everybody's got a pencil first. We all got a pencils? Okay. Question 32. Question 32. That, we're not going to just jump into that question just yet. First, we need to establish what is a parallel line and what is a perpendicular line. All right. I, I know for, for most people that will be a review, but we're going to make sure that we understand. I'll draw some examples of lines up here and we can label them. You don't have to write anything this part. You can just be watching. Now, uh, sometimes you guys have to take important phone calls, uh, and I, I encourage that and allow it family first, so like I was telling her. Um, at any moment, my phone uh, may ring, and I may have to step out into the hall to take an important phone call. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen often, but it's definitely going to happen today, sometime in the next hour. So if I just suddenly leave the room, that's that's what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna label this. This is the x-axis and this is the b-axis. Does that look right? No. Oh, sorry. What uh, what do I put here? Y. Why? Why? No. Just oh. The letter. Sorry. Got you. Thank you. I'm playing with you guys. Okay. So we'll put Y here, and X here, and uh, Y here, and X here. There's no law that says that these axes have to be labeled this way. In fact, when you get into twelfth grade, you'll take a class called economics where they literally switch the axes. Prepare for your mind to be blown, right? While you try to keep up with that. Okay. Here come the lines. Now I've got to draw two lines on each one of these planes. Here's line number one. And I'm going to label this line. Let's see. That's a straight line, a flat line, right? And its equation is y equals, we'll call this 4, okay? y equals 4. Now down here, we'll call this negative 6. And I'm going to draw another line down here. Its equation will be y equals 6, negative 6, sorry, negative 6. Now over here, I'm going to draw a line. Okay. And then I'm going to use, yeah, yes. Where I put just just put them right over here on top of the PlayStation 4. Yeah, the PlayStation 4. Mm, right, right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, now look what I'm going to do. Look what I'm going to do, folks. I'll use a tool you have in front of you. I'm going to take this tool. What's this thing called? 
a protractor, okay? Now, for kids, they call it an amateur tractor. This is the worst joke ever. It's a protractor. Oh. Amateur tractor. So it's like a junior varsity tractor versus a varsity tractor. This is a protractor. So notice what I'm doing here. Watch. What 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 did I just do? I marked the line at what degree? Ninety. Okay. Bueno. Uh huh. So, and then I'm going to put in a special little symbol right here. You guys know what that means, right? Okay. So, over here, what's the word? Parallel, and here, perpendicular. So you already you already know the key thing about perpendicular lines. They must be at ninety degrees to one another. Okay. Over here, parallel lines. How do we describe it? So they're just straight. They kind of run alongside, like skis. They don't ever touch. They don't ever touch. Now there are, there is a, a mathematical way of, of writing it. Okay, so on, on your paper, what I want you to do is take your, your document here and turn it this way where the, the spiral's on top. And we're going to take some notes along the bottom of the page, okay? And we're going to write this. Okay, here's note number one, okay? Parallel, P-A-R-A-L-L-E-L, -L -L -E parallel lines, have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. In this example, what is the slope of these two red lines? It rhymes with hero. Zero. zero. So the full equation, you know, this is like a shorthand version of the equation. The full equation is y equals 0x plus 4. And down here, the full equation is y equals 0x minus 6. So the key thing about parallel lines and how you recognize them is that the slope m is the same. So you, on the star test and in your homework, you won't always be given a picture. The real easy way to know if it's parallel is you check that slope. If the slope is the same, it's a parallel line, okay? So uh, the fall, they'll give you two equations and they'll say, well, these following two lines ever cross. You determine if the slopes are the same, the answer to the question, Alexis already told us, would be no. If those slopes are the same, they will never cross. Will these lines ever cross? No, because they are parallel, and parallel lines have the same slope, and same slope never cross. Over here. This one's the harder one. This one's the one you've got to pay attention to, okay? In, in math, in geometry, you will be using this protractor to find that there's a 90-degree relationship between these two lines. In algebra, you don't use that. You have to find it numerically, okay? So over here, we're going to write perpendicular, P-E-R-P, E-N-D, I-C-U, L A R perpendicular lines have, and this is the important part, negative reciprocal 
slopes. So I'm going to write that in pink. Negative. I'll explain everything. Negative reciprocal. Reciprocal is a hard word. R-E-C-I-P-R-O-C-A-L. Reciprocal. Negative reciprocal slopes. This is the big idea today. Students from years past never have any trouble with parallel. It's obvious and it's easy. Okay. This one gets you. So we're going to focus most of our attention here. Now on the star test, you are guaranteed to get a question that asks you about perpendicular lines. They always put one on there. So it's in our interest to make sure we nail this down. All righty. Let me know when I can erase this. Okay, and, and just because I'm, what I'm doing is I'm recording this. Um, I'm going to move the camera for just a second to show what's written on the uh, other part of the board. So the date is written, and we have the subject, the peak is being covered, the page and the workbook the students have, and a short description of the topic, writing equations of parallel and perpendicular. Okay, is there anyone still writing or can I erase? I'm okay, thank you. Wah, wah, wah. Time for some examples. So because we want to keep these notes in our booklets, let's put these examples down here on the bottom of the page, okay? These are real quick examples. There's not a lot of, uh, of math involved. It's really a trick. Okay, so first, we're gonna do an example one. So I'm gonna give you an original slope, okay? Remember, slope is M. So let's say that your original slope is two over five. This was a slope from your test. Remember this one, two-fifths, x plus one? Okay. Now let me show you how easy life is in negative reciprocal land. So the question would be, write the slope of a line perpendicular to this one. Here's what you do. Ready? I'm going to write the instructions up on the board, and I'd like you to copy them down. Oh, hold on. Sorry? If it's perpendicular, perpendicular. Perpendicular, yeah. Okay, then I'm going to touch the parallel. Gotcha. Okay, so... Perpendicular, step one, okay? Flip it. I'm guessing you thought there were going to be more to that step. <laughs> Flip it, okay? Bop it. Turn it. Okay, kick it. Throw it. Burn it. Here, that would be my version of that game. Yes. So that means you're flipping it, which is the five will be on top and the two will be on the bottom. Exactly. So you just you multiply it. No, you just flip it. Just oh. just flip it like what you said. <laughs> just put the bottom on the top and the top on the bottom. So that's step one. So before I write that, we'll do step two. We'll write step two. Okay. Change sign. Flip it and change the sign. So Let's, let's just walk, tread carefully through this. First, let's flip it. So now I've got M equals 5 over 2. Now I've got to change the sign. What should I put in front of this fraction? A negative, a negative sign. Very good. If it's a positive. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to put one more example here. Let's say I give you this slope, because this is where it kind of gets a little confusing. 
So if you get a whole number slope, how do you flip a whole number? Can you say it a little louder? Because it is literally perfect. You put, yeah. So to step back from what you said, because you actually gave me the correct perpendicular slope. First, on this one, you want to go ahead and make this three into a fraction by just putting it over one. Okay. Now flip it, right? So do this flip maneuver where you do what Becca said, and then you'll end up with what Jessica said. Okay, so let's flip it. So now we have M equals one over three. And then you change the sign, it'll be negative. Good job. You change the sign, it will be negative. Okay. Very good. So I want to erase these when y'all are ready. Okay. Anyone still writing? Very, very. Yeah, keep going. There's no rush. Great question. So if, if I ask you for a, a line, an equation of a line or a slope that was parallel to two fifths, mm -hmm. you would tell me two fifths. Same here. If, if I said, give me the equation of a line parallel to a line with a slope of three, you would give me a line with a slope of three. The, the job in parallel questions is so easy that it almost confuses you because it's you're, you're being asked to do almost nothing. You're just being asked to pick, a slope, pick the answer that's got the same slope as the one you're given in the question. With perpendicular, you just have to do the flip it change of flip change. Okay, flip change. You've actually done this before. Uh, some we called it keep flip change KFC keep flip change. Okay, we're doing it almost all those steps, right? We're not keeping we're flipping and changing though, right? It's a little different because when we said change we were changing from multiplication to division keep flip change had to do with multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides to get rid of a fraction. Remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was like 300 steps. 300 steps. This is just, this is it. So as long as you don't allow your brain to get uh, over overly confused, you'll be fine. I'm going to erase. Is that okay? All right. So now I want to show you, I don't want to erase the steps. I want to show you an example involving an actual linear equation. So here's your given linear equation y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 4. The question would be on the star test, write the equation of a line perpendicular to the given line. Yes? So that's, that means for the fraction you um, flip it? Right. So you actually can keep this part and just change this part. Yeah. So let's yeah, do your step. Over here, we started with M equals negative three over two. And so we'll first flip it. So, so two over negative three. Two over three and change the sign to make it positive. So now let's construct the equation of the perpendicular line. Ready? Okay. Here's the equation of the perpendicular line. Y equals two thirds X plus four. Now I want to show you something. Okay. I want to show you something on Desmos so that you can see how this works. Let me pull Desmos up here. Let's type in the original equation. Y equals negative 3 over 2 X plus 4. Now we'll type in the one we wrote. Y equals 2 over 3 X plus 4. Look at that. Do you see how it has that perfect 90 degree relationship? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, there you go. 
Um, on the on the star test, you would be if you had a picture, you would be looking for the picture that made that perfect T shape. OK. All right. I think you have a good understanding of this situation. So let's jump into these two questions and then we're done. So we're looking at question 32 on page 19. Um, page 19. I, I, I know it's after lunch. I don't want to call on anyone who doesn't want to read. Are there any volunteers to read the question? Becca, number 32. Question 32. Can you read that first sentence there? What are the... Wait. You're doing a great. Yeah. What are the equation and slope of the line shown on the grid? Very good. Okay. So let's take a look at these answer choices. Now, I, it's going to be hard for me to show the uh, camera this, but what we have is a perfectly vertical line passing through six on the x axis. All students have a physical copy of this workbook. At home learners have access to a digital copy of this workbook. Let's consider each answer choice. Answer choice F says y equals 6 and that the slope is negative 1 sixth. Yay or nay? Does that sound right or wrong? What have we learned about this vertical line business? What's the slope of a vertical line? Opposite of zero. Look at your answer choices. Six, but you got to put a word underneath it, and then you got to flip it. The slope. What is the slope of a perfectly vertical line? It's undefined. Undefined. Very good. Okay. So, which answer choice shows a slope of undefined? It's the only one that says undefined. We're on page nineteen, number thirty-two. Okay. Look at number 36. What is the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 2 comma 7 and has a slope of 0? Let me ask this question, okay? Remember when we had the two pictures up on the board? Remember how one of them had an M of zero over here? What, how would you describe that line? Was it, was it like flat, was it angled, or was it vertical? Was it one that was drawn right here? It was flat. It was flat. So slopes of zero, flat line. So, which one of these numbers, negative 2 or 7, is important? One of them we have, we could care less. Which one does not, which one, which one is important? Which one does not matter? 7 is important and negative 2 is not because of the fact that negative 2 is 0. So, good job, Alexis. I mean, couldn't have said it better myself. When you're considering a flat line, you don't care about the x value when you're writing the equation, because the slope is zero, all right? So if you have this coordinate pair, negative two comma seven, and you're trying to write the equation of a line that has a slope of zero that passes through this point, you just, you don't care about the negative two, you just write y equals seven. So the answer would be j. Oh, thank you. The, uh, the star, those were star test questions. They didn't give us much to work with in activating the knowledge we just acquired. So I'm going to uh, put some additional questions on the board that we will answer as a group. You don't have to write these down, okay, because you've written on your book already. Just kind of look up at the board. 
Here's an example. Write the equation. I'll abbreviate equation EQN of a line parallel to y equals 3x plus 7 passing through two comma four. Okay, now this question has a little bit more meat on its bones. Okay, so first of all, let's answer the part that we already know what to do. What is gonna be the slope of this parallel line that we're going to write? The slope. What is the slope of the line that is written up on the board? What is the slope of this line? It'll be three. Three. Very good. So I want to find the slope of a line parallel to this line. What would be the parallel slope? Three. Three. So we already know some information, all right? We know that our slope will be 3. So m equals 3. Now notice, they gave us a point. Brendan, you see this? They gave us a point. Which one of these is x1 and which one of these is y1? The 2 is x1, the 4 is y1, okay? Notice that x is always first. Notice this, they give us a point and they give us a slope. Do we have a, a, a line equation form that involves points and slopes? What's it called? Uh, M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Becca, you have just perfectly given the formula for slope. Very good job. Okay, so that's actually needed to generate the slope, which we've already got. Now, the, the equation we want to use right now is called the point-slope form. Do you remember this? It'll be y equals... Point, hold on one sec, point-slope form. This one's the hard one to remember. It's y minus y1 equals m open parentheses x minus x1 close parentheses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in y1, which is 4, x1, which is 2, and m, which is 3. Yeah, so then I'm going to write y minus 4 equals 3. Yeah. Open parentheses, x minus 2. Okay. Now, what property do I need to use to put this 3? Distribute. Distributive property. Perfect. Becca, you're doing really well today. Good job. Multiply the, so it will be 3x. Little, let old Morelli catch up here. So I've got to, I'm going to rewrite the left side, y minus 4, because I didn't touch that, equals, you go ahead, 3. Plus. 3 times negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is? Is 6. Is positive it 6. Positive or negative? Positive. 3 times negative 2. A positive times a negative is a negative. negative. So it'll be negative 6, okay? So minus 6. Now there's just one step to being done. Jessica, excellent. What do we call this? The additive inverse. The additive inverse. And that, and that side cancels out. Bye-bye. 
And so now we got y equals 3. Now you have to do this math. Negative 6 plus 4. Other direction. Will be negative 2. Good job, Becca. Minus 2. So what this is right here is the equation of a line parallel to this line. See how it has the same slope, 3, 3? But it passes through this point right here. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to bring our attention back to Desmos. Take a look at this. Because a picture is worth a thousand words. You ever heard that phrase? First, we'll type in y equals 3x plus 7. Now, I'm going to type in the point 2 comma 4. Okay? I'm going to label this point point. All right? That was inventive. Now, I'm going to type in the equation we found. Why? It, it has to pass through that point. Otherwise, it's wrong. Okay? Y equals 3x minus 2. Do, is it parallel? Excellent. So that's how you know you're right. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do in here is we're going to do just one more of these, but we're going to do a perpendicular. Okay. So let me bring this back. Again, I'm, I'm actually more interested that y'all are all focused and you are. 100% of the people in this room are looking up at the board. I'm more interested that you're focused on trying to get the initial concept here as opposed to trying to scribble everything I'm writing on the board down. We'll get to that when we take our guided notes, okay, either tomorrow or next week. So now we're going to do another example, but this time we're going to do the perpendicular version. All right, ready? Here's example. Write the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals, uh, let's see, we'll use the one from yesterday, 2 fifths x plus 1, passing through, and I'm going to let you guys invent the point, passing through Now invent the point. So, Lamarion, give me a single digit number. Two. Passing through two comma six. Perfect. So this is our task. We are going to find the and write the equation of a line perpendicular to this line passing through this point. So let me just actually jump to Desmos to show you what task we have in front of us. Let's jump to Desmos and type in y equals 2 over 5 x plus 1. And then we'll type in our point that we've got to get, 2 comma 6. Okay, so we'll label that. We'll label this the target. Okay, the target point. It's got to go through that point and it's got to be perpendicular to this line. So now we're going to go back to the board. Remember our steps. You take the original slope and you flip it and you change the sign. So, it'll, it'll be 5 five over 2. Negative five, negative. negative 5 over 2. So we know our slope, M, will be negative 5 over 2. Very good. Does everyone understand how we get negative 5 over 2? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we're going to use the point slope formula. Look again, we've got M, that's the slope, and we've got the point, which we're going to label X1, Y1. So we've got a point and we've got a slope. We can use the point slope form. So this is just a plug and play situation, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, point slope form, Y minus Y1 equals M, open parentheses, X minus X1, close parentheses. Now I'm going to put y, and I'm going to stick in minus y1. What's y1? 
y minus 6, okay, equals, what's m? Um, negative 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. Y'all are doing great. Open parentheses, we keep this x minus x1, which is 2. And we're going to close off those parentheses. Does everyone see how I just copied and pasted this information from up here? Now let's do the blank property. Okay, the McRibative property. We're going to distribute the negative 5 over 2 here and here. And once we're done with that, we'll add the 6 to both sides using additive inverse. But first, we'll deal with this. So my first step is to just rewrite the left side since I didn't touch these two dudes over here. Okay. Now... Negative 5 over 2x. Very good. Negative 5 over 2x. Now, before we start hopping into this one here, we're going to do this in side work. So over here in side work, I'm going to write negative 5 over 2 times negative 2. That's the distribution we have to do. So we need to consider this carefully. How do I write negative 2 as a fraction? Thank you, Jessica, negative two over one. So my first step is to write this as negative two over one. Now we're gonna multiply across the top and across the bottom. Brendan, what is negative five times negative two? Positive 10 equals 10. Camden, what's two times one? Two. two. Maribel, what is 10 divided by 2? 5. Final answer, 5. So this, this 5 right here, that is going to go right here, and it's going to be a plus 5, okay? Plus 5. Now, additive inverse time. We are going to add 6 to both sides. These cancel. Now, y equals negative 5 over 2x 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 11. So we think this is our answer, right? And if it is, we're done for the day. So let's all keep our fingers crossed. Let's go type this into Desmos and see what we get. Remember, target point. It's got to go through there and it's got to be perpendicular. Y equals negative 5 over 2 X plus 11. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Let's give ourselves a round of applause. We did it. It's exciting. Okay. Y'all try to keep your excitement under control. I know it's hard. Okay. Um, looking ahead just a little bit. So we hit our target point. That's how we know we're right. Uh, looking ahead just a little bit. The intersection of these two points right here is called the solution to a system of linear equations. But that's looking ahead. Just, just a heads up, that's what we're doing. So just to recap what we learned today, what did we learn today? We learned that parallel lines have the same slope as each other. They never cross. They never cross. Perpendicular lines cross, cross they, yeah, negative reciprocal. reciprocal slope. And what were the two steps to get that? You had to Flip it and change the sign. Flip it and change the sign. Everybody... Very good job. I'm very proud of you and all of your hard work. It means a lot to me that you all paid attention, and I, I hope you learned something. Did you learn something today? Did you understand the way we taught it? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, guys. Thanks again.